Hey guys, it's John from Welcome to Adulting. Today, we're going to be talking about mental health. Um, and before I begin, I really wanted to note that Caleb, Sean, and I, um, we are not mental health professionals at all. We're not counselors or psychologists or psychiatrists. Um, but we are going to be talking about our own experience. We're going to be talking about things that have helped us or other people that we've seen. But before we talk about any of that, if you're struggling with anxiety, with depression, or with any mental health issues, please seek help. Um, and if you're in a, a dark place um, and you are having either thoughts of suicide or contemplating taking your own life, please call the National Suicide Hotline um, or Helpline. That is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please, if you're if you're in that place, you owe it to yourself to to be able to get help. You are worth it. Hey, this is Welcome to Adulting. This is the podcast that kind of acts as a survival guide to your day-to-day life. I'm John. I'm Shauna. And I'm Caleb. And this week, we're going to be talking about mental health um, and things that you can do to really ensure that your mental and emotional well-being is really taken care of. And just like, you know, we take vitamins and exercise to keep our bodies healthy, things we can do to keep our minds healthy. Before we talk about that, I want to kind of celebrate some, some things that we've been doing well, celebrate our adulting wins. Um, so Shauna, let's start with you this week. How have you adulted? Okay, so I'm going to admit something kind of embarrassing. My side of my desk in the computer room, it, what, you, it, was, a, it was bad. It was a sty. There were papers everywhere. And I took an hour out of my day and I organized it all. So I'm pretty proud of that one. I feel like I have about 20 piles of things that I tell myself I'm going to organize and that I don't. So congratulations on actually spending the hour to go through that and organize stuff. That is... Yeah, that's that huge. is crazy, but awesome crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Thanks. that is awesome. How you much? Of... my basement. Oh, but the computer room is good. <laughs> how much of that stuff did you end up just getting rid of? Like, how much of it was stuff that you can just toss? You know. Yep. So I am, especially with my husband, I'm known as a person to keep things I don't need to. So most of it was old docs that I will not use again. So it's going in the burn pile. I totally thought you said old ducks, like the bird, oh, no. but so <laughs> documents. <laughs> I'm just imagining a bunch of little Should baby, I little baby I ducks. That? No, oh, are you kidding? Oh, That's oh, great. Oh, I'm just thinking of little baby ducks on your desk. That's the most cute thing I've ever thought of. <laughs> oh, that should be a desk ornament. Can you, just a bunch of baby ducks or just, I mean, I have I'll a rubber. order us some. I have a rubber duck that's like a Santa rubber duck that's on my desk at work. So <laughs> I already true. have a duck on my desk. So yeah, good job. Way to, to organize and get rid of all the ducks that are on your yeah. desk. I was I Thank was actu- you. <laughs> I was actually going through some old paperwork recently and I found like papers when I was an education major, which was before I went to school for radio. Wow. So these were papers that I've kept for maybe like thirteen years and I just never got rid of them. They're gone now. <laughs> but Doesn't I know it what feel good about. to it get does. rid of it? I that is like the most satisfying feeling is to get rid of stuff you don't need or to like tidy up not even clean just like tidy things up is so nice I have like at work I have normally one at least once a week I'll just have a clean my desk area like on my to-do list and I did that today and that felt great so you did it at your house which I feel like is a lot tougher to do it at home so good job congratulations thank you um this week one way that I adulted which way do I want to I had like three things I was gonna gonna bring up and I forgot all of them um I started a puzzle does that count as adulting only if you finish it I think so I mean you're doing something to relax it's it's relaxing no I I think one here's how I adulted this week um I'm kind of stealing one that Caleb had done a few weeks ago but I dog sat for someone this this last weekend which was nice to you know house sit and dog sit for someone um I on monday i had gotten a text from them and they were like hey what are you doing this weekend and i was like oh i've got most of my friends are out of town but like i'm free like yeah i'm, I'm free to do anything and he's like cool let's go hang out guys yeah i was thinking he was gonna be like hey let's hang out let's do something he's like cool can you dog sit for our two dogs <laughs> and house it so they're gonna be paying me so it's kind of that you know little extra side hustle help a friend out type thing but keep their their house somewhat clean Make sure their dogs are okay. And it's a husky and a German shepherd. Oh, nice. Type dogs. So they are big dogs. 
it was fun, but it was nice. I got to Did hang out with Did you cuddle with them? A little bit. But once you start cuddling with them, then the other one starts to like attack you. Yep. <laughs> it's it's tough. One of them would be amazing. Either one of them on their own would be amazing. Them together gets to be a bit much. When I was in Alaska, that was a popular breed of mixture for like sled dogs, mm. German shepherds, and huskies. And I don't know. I loved them. But up in Alaska, they looked like wolves. Mm -hmm. The amount of fur that they can have. It would be terrifying when they would run at you, but they're just trying to say hello. Mm -hmm. So, but they did look like wolves. Yeah, and they can, and they're big, so they can, you know, mm -hmm. not necessarily knock you over, but have a little bit of heft. So, yeah, I adulted. I, I helped a friend out by dog sitting for them, even though I thought that I was just going to be hanging out with them. But that's okay. So, yeah. What about you, Caleb? How have you adulted? Yeah. So, kind of like Shauna, I actually, while I'm not organizing my desk. I'm building it. Ooh. So for the past couple of weeks, uh, my wife wanted to do like a office, a desk in the bedroom. So I moved a piece of furniture that we don't use. And we have this really long, like empty strip then. So I went to a store and I bought like a fake tabletop kind of shelf looking thing. And a friend of mine, his dad does... Uh, has like a warehouse full of old office equipment that nobody uses anymore. So I went and picked out uh, filing cabinets and just ha I've started putting them on top and I built like a shelf on top of it. The only problem is, is that the wall is right next to brick. So the screws aren't going all the way in. So it's a little tilted right now until I try to figure out what to do. But yeah. And I built chairs. So Ooh. that was a fun accomplishment, but very frustrating at the same time. Mm -hmm. I am not like a handyman builder at all. When you were describing all the things you did, I just got to, I'm so sorry. I kind of glazed over and had no <laughs> idea what you were saying. In, in but, it I heard sounded, you, Caleb. but it yeah. sounded really impressive. So I can't do any of that. If you came over, it really isn't. <laughs> you know, I'm more if, impressed that you were able to do it so cheap. Yeah, it, it actually... Like buying fake shelving and things like that, I was able and getting free file cabinets. I mean, it probably building a twelve foot desk cost like ten dollars. Wow, so, that is nothing. Yeah, so I'm really happy with the cost and the chairs that I built actually came in a set and we only needed two, and so I built them and I looked for what they cost at retail and. I'm going to make a profit. So that's nice. Nice. I feel like whenever I do work at home, then I just do the thing where I make my bed my desk. And that's what I did all throughout college. So having an actual desk to do anything at is definitely an adulting win. It is. But I do feel like I could have gone faster. I had the football game on behind me. So mm. <laughs> there are so many times I would just take a break and see what was going on. So... While it was a win, it probably time management was a fail. You killed two birds with one stone. You watched a game and made some made a desk. So sure. That's yeah. that's two wins, I guess. So good job. If you have an adulting win, uh, please share it with us. We'd love to, to share it on the podcast. Uh, you can go to welcome to adultingpod.com where you can find links to our Facebook, our Instagram. Um, on both of those, you can search welcome to adulting podcast. Uh, click on the little blue and green ribbon logo there. Let us know how you've adulted. We'd love to hear from you um, and give you a shout out about how you've adulted in the last couple of weeks. You can also go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and a little review. In the review, let us know how you adulted and we can share that as well. Um, or wherever you're listening to podcasts, we'd love a, a rating and a review and a subscription that would really help us out. It really helps to kind of push us up the, the podcasting charts. So yeah, we would, would really appreciate that. Like we said before, we're going to be talking about mental health in a little bit. So definitely stick around and we'll be right back to talk about that. A big thank you to the Family Radio Network for believing that an adulting life is done better together. Visit thefamily.net to find great music, articles to help us do this thing called life, share a prayer request, and listen to your favorite podcast, Welcome to Adulting. Welcome back to Welcome to Adulting. Like we said before the break, we're going to be talking about uh, mental health. This is a really broad topic, um, which I really understand. 
but it's something that even having like a baseline understanding of is really important. And I think it's a really key part of adulting. Um, before we kind of get into it, I want to kind of share why this is so important to me. Um, this is a topic that I was really pushing for us to, to talk about. Um, this is something that I've kind of like on and off throughout my adult life have kind of gone up and down with struggles with stuff. Um, especially when I was in college, then I really, really started to struggle with, with anxiety, with different things like that. Um, just whether it was social stuff, feeling like a failure, feeling, you know, inadequate and capable of doing stuff. And it kind of caused me to basically retreat inwards, spend a lot of time alone, a lot of time by myself. And it kind of got to the point where there were certain times where I just wouldn't be able to do anything because I would just be so wrapped up in that space. Um, but I kind of graduated, got out into the real world, but didn't actually address any of the issues that were kind of causing that problem. So after I'd gotten out of there, I got a job, um, moved over to Colorado, and basically when I was there, I was didn't know anyone, kind of was really alone, which caused all of the anxiety, all of those issues that I'd had before to really compound and just cause a lot of other problems. Um, my work stuff, the place where I was working was awesome, but my productivity went just down. I basically spent the entire time thinking about how bad I was at my job and then I wasn't able to get anything done at my job. Um, and I basically just was really emotionally flat and eventually had to kind of had a couple of borderline breakdowns where I eventually ne realized I needed to, to come back home. Um, so did all that. And through that whole time, I was on and off learning more and more about mental health, what it was, how to kind of spot signs of being mentally unhealthy. Um, and eventually learn some techniques to get to a much more healthy place where I am today. So I want to talk about, about mental health, talk about what it is. Um, and really, according to mentalhealth.gov, mental health is your emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It can affect things like your how you act, think, and feel. Um, it can have to do with how you handle stress, make decisions. Um, it can affect you at every stage of your life, so from childhood to adolescence, um, and it can be affected by, you know, biological or genetic factors. It can be caused by, you know, experiences, trauma, family history, all those things. All this to say, it's really important and affects every part of your life. So with all that kind of preamble out of the way, um, yeah, I want to I want to talk with you guys about what mental health is, what it looks like, um, and why it's so important to kind of understand your mental health. Um, a lot of people, especially growing up, I kind of heard the, you know, the whole like pull yourself up from your bootstraps kind of get over it and i think now we know that that's not really how it works you don't just kind of get over these issues um but yeah why why not like why is this such an important thing for us to to understand especially as as adults well i think it has gotten more important uh through time because of just understanding it more scientifically mm -hmm. as well as just uh being more culturally acceptable the other day i saw uh, a meme where uh, there was a guy with his hand underwater, like, hey, I'm, I'm drowning with depression and there's somebody reaching down for him. Mm -hmm. And then it just gives him a high five and it says, the high five says, be a man. I think that was a lot of it. Like, I remember my grandpa uh, not really talking about his feelings really ever. Or, um, you know, I grew up in a home though where it was very open. I mean, my father was bipolar manic depressive and so we experienced it every day basically mm -hmm. so um i think as time went on from where my grandpa was uh in society to where even to where my dad was just understanding the medicine and the the medical side of mental health has really i think opened our eyes as a society mm -hmm. and i think we began to understand that it's a one, like there's a lot of different ways that it can affect people, you know, whether it's um, something like a, uh, you know, something where it's something that needs medication to something that's just counseling to maybe just small changes as well. Like there's a whole spectrum of, you know, like anything with health, you know, like mental health affects everyone differently. Um, and just, you know, like you said, science and understanding what it actually is and how it affects you has really, yeah, really made a huge impact. Again, we're, we are not in no way shape or form are we you know medical professionals 
Uh, but I wanted to kind of give some and talk a little bit about how you can, you know, that you are keeping your mind healthy um, and that you are being able to to look at other people and kind of notice the signs of, um, you know, people who need help and be able to kind of identify those and what you can do to help. So I kind of want to start with um, ourselves and we can kind of go out. What are a few things that you've kind of noticed are, are you know, you can do to stay mentally healthy? Having friends to talk to when you're having a bad day or going through a rough time or you're super stressed is huge. Talking to your parents is huge. Um, I actually went through a period in my life and not a whole lot of people even know about it. My husband does, my mom does, but I was really, really depressed and I kind of hit it. I didn't want to have that label, so I didn't seek out help and, um, you know, I just kept doing my day-to-day thing, but I just felt down all the time and there wasn't a purpose. A person that did that to me it's just I was in this funk and it wasn't until I went to seek out a Christian counselor I remember walking into her office I had an hour session with her and we just talked we talked about everything I was feeling things I had been going through and I walked out of that office and I felt like all of those heavy weights that were on my shoulders making me feel so bad were gone so talking to people is amazing for your mental health hmm I think, you know, I I mentioned when I was in college was when kind of some of my issues had started. Um, One of the biggest things I was, yeah, I was really afraid to talk to people about it. And I would always make up excuses for why I didn't want to do stuff. So I would have friends who were going out and doing things. And, you know, I I really struggle with social anxiety. um, And sometimes it'll get to the point where I basically feel like I can't move or do anything because I'm just very filled with, yeah, with a lot of anxiety. And so I would basically tell people, I would use the dumbest excuses in in, in college. Um, and my go-to was telling people, oh, sorry, I've got a lot of emails I need to catch up on. Um, because I, I worked at the uh, college radio station, so I had to, like, email people, you know, to keep stuff going. But I would basically just use that as my excuse for, yeah, I, I don't want to do stuff and can't really do this right now. Um, but then after college, some of those friends who I was really close with, um, yeah, I began opening up more and more about stuff that I was struggling with and you know, people who I thought would think it was really dumb and really, you know, wouldn't understand were were extremely helpful, really understanding, and even just, again, being able to talk to people. So whether it's a counselor, whether it's close friends, you know, being able to talk with people about it made a huge difference. Um, yeah, I, I think that also recognizing, like, what you do in response to your issues is also really important. Um, one thing I was reading, I was reading a lot about this, and one thing they talked about was um, how people will often, you know, self-medicate themselves. So that can be with anything from drugs and alcohol to playing video games all the time to Netflix all the time to, for me, my big thing was eating. Like food was a huge mm-hmm. thing and it still is something that I use like as a, as a way of comforting myself, um, either comforting myself or rewarding myself, all of those things. And so like be aware of those um, and kind of find ways to switch those to find healthy things that you can do instead. Um, what would you guys say for people who kind of recognize these things? What are some things that they can do to kind of boost their mental health. So definitely socializing, talking with people or getting help from from a counselor is really, really helpful. What are some other things that people can do? And yeah, if they recognize this in their own life to kind of help strengthen their their mental health. I think it's important to know that there is medicine Mm -hmm. out there that can help you. Um, For the past couple months, I've actually been on medicine and I've seen a significant difference in just my approach towards work, my ability to sleep. Like there were times where I just wasn't, I think John, you've even asked me like, sometimes I'm just like, I didn't sleep well last Mm -hmm. night. And it's just constantly just think going on in my head, just worries and concerns and thoughts of myself. And I've just seen a complete difference uh, after talking to somebody and using this stuff. I think it's important to know that medicine Sometimes it takes a while to get the right dosage and the right Mm -hmm. type too. So Mm -hmm. if you do try that with a doctor that knows what they're doing, it's not going to happen overnight, so give it time. Another thing I wanted to say, an obvious thing is exercise. But I think that the toughest part about all of this is getting up and choosing to do those things. Mm -hmm. Because once you do, you know you feel better. It's just, it's hard. It's hard to do. And the third thing I wanted to say is when I was struggling, Caleb, I had the same thing where I had very negative thoughts all of the time and most of them were me putting myself down and 
that kind of thinking, obviously as toxic as it is, it it becomes a habit and you mm-hmm. do it all day long, all of the time. So I think it's important to tr- retrain your brain and recognize when you're doing it and tell yourself like literally in the moment and say, stop, nope, not mm-hmm. doing this. Right, right. And like push those thoughts away because it's so easy to get into a bad and negative habit. It really is. And just going off of habit, like I've discovered just building a routine, like for me personally, it is getting up before my wife, making her breakfast. But during that time, I've created a playlist of artists who uh, actually write songs who are going through similar feelings as I am. So like sometimes I'll just even here at work, I'll be like, Alexa, play my playlist. I call it mood, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, play that. And while I'm cooking, also uh, have a Bible next to me uh, mm-hmm. and just I'm going through a specific verse for each month. So I'm just reading this one verse every day mm-hmm. per month, just trying to memorize that. Yeah. And I think finding things that will retrain your brain is a huge huge thing. So I'm, I'm the same way with routine where I literally have like a whiteboard calendar that I write stuff down on every week and cross things off of, you know, did I work out today? Did I read today? Did I read my Bible today? Um, and finding, you know, I, I love and hate reading all at the same time. Cause I get really, you know, I, I get really distracted when I read, but I love reading. I love learning. And so reading books that will, you know, really mentally in, that are really mentally engaging setting aside a, a quiet time to read my Bible, to pray, to do things like that, things that'll kind of get my mind off of me, off of what I'm doing and what I'm focusing on. Um, exercise. We talked about exercise a little bit of, you know, diet and exercise makes a huge difference. But even just when I am at the gym, I'm focused on what I'm doing at the gym. And I've used that as such a like positive stress relief of I am running and that's all I'm doing and I'm focusing on running and I'm focusing on doing squats or I'm focused on you know, whatever I'm doing and I don't have time to think about all those other negative things because I'm just thinking about I need to do three more push-ups before I'm done with this set, which then once you've done it, you feel that positive, you know, you feel really good about yourself because you've been able to do something good and kind of prove to yourself, no, these things that I'm thinking are a lie and I can do this. And I think it's really important. We hear it, but you have to like you have to listen, hear it. Mm-hmm. Everyone at some point in their life will struggle with some type of depression or anxiety yep. or just a sad point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you you have to be willing to talk to people and let them know when you're struggling and know that they love you through it. They don't think less of you. They don't think you're weird. Just you have to talk to people and reach out. And if you're struggling with self-medicating by drinking or you know doing things you shouldn't be, recognize it and reach out to people you love so it doesn't get worse Mm -hmm. and it's really easy to think and this is something that i still struggle with of there is you know when we think of depression especially in tv and movies a lot of times people will show it as the result of something else and a lot of times it can be um so whether it's childhood trauma or something else but a lot of times it can be brought on by things that either seem like nothing or it can just kind of happen And I always would get upset at myself of there's no reason why I should be feeling this way. And that is, which then led me to feel worse about myself of, you know, I'm feeling bad about nothing. Look at how stupid I am for feeling bad about nothing, you know? So it's really easy to get in that mindset as well. So understand, like you were saying, everyone goes through this. Everyone will struggle with this. And sometimes they'll struggle with it for what seems like no reason. And that's okay. And to cut yourself some slack of saying, you know, I feel like this, this is the reality. It's not something you need to ignore it's not something you need to deny but what are you going to do about it you know you can self-medicate through all those different things we mentioned or you can you know push through get help work through those things and give it time to get better Mm -hmm. sometimes unfortunately and it sucks but it takes a long time for you to feel good again Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that it won't ever come you just need to be patient and wait and figure out the best tactic is that the right word yeah for you to get better you'll have trial and error Mm -hmm. yeah i tried so many different things that i thought you know i've I've tried a lot of different things to kind of work it out or changes in my routine that i thought would help that you know i tried for a while didn't work found other things you know so it's trial and error finding different tactics but yeah here's i i kind of want to 
switch the focus really briefly. We've been talking a lot of internal stuff, which is really good to be able to to figure that out in yourself. What if you? What are some things you can look for in other people, though? Um, if you notice mm-hmm. someone else who, you know, a friend who might be in a similar situation, might be struggling with stuff, how do you notice these things in a friend? Um, and how do you reach out to them if they might be struggling? Yeah, for me, it is uh, short answers, more distracted than they normally are, an unwillingness to talk about things that they're normally comfortable with, even just ignoring checkups. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a friend right now that I've been trying to reach out to for like a week and his mom's responding saying that he's fine, but he's not responding to anything. So yeah, those are some signs that maybe something's going on. I think that um, if they're very withdrawn, so uh, if you're together in a social activity and they don't really want to participate, if they're not getting ready, so like their hair is a mess all the time, they're kind of not put together. I mean, that can be a huge sign they're going through something, especially if it's not their norm. If their house is a mess and that's not their norm. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that was stuff that I struggled with when I was going through that tough time right after college, ironically, too, Mm. is it was so hard to just be normal, to do my dishes, to do laundry. To, I mean, I did it, but it took a long time for me to do it, and I just didn't want to. It's hard to find that motivation sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also, I, I think you mentioned, you know, if you see them in a social situation, they're not, you know, engaging or not how they normally seem. If they seem, this is going to sound really redundant, but like if they seem anxious or if, you know, a lot of times then I'll get really fidgety. Um, I'm normally pretty fidgety, but I'll be extra like, fidgety doing a lot of tapping kind of a little bit more withdrawn if i'm in a social social situation um here's another good question how do you what do you do when you see that because i i feel like sometimes at least me personally i kind of just need a second to have some space and allowing someone to have that space and work through it can be helpful but also knowing when to you know how do you know when to step in to kind of be there for them and and be Mm -hmm. you know encourage them if they're in that situation how do you yeah what do you do there have been a few times when I've come across um, in my church people like that, and I will look around, and no one will go up to them. And I'm thinking to myself, is someone going to do it? Because something is clearly wrong, and people don't, just because they're afraid of starting that conversation and bothering them. I do it. I go up to them, and I'm like, "Are you? hey, how's it going? And are you doing okay? Is there any specific way I can pray for you? And then I just say, you know, I just want you to know if you ever need anything or someone to talk to that I'm here and you just seem like you might have something on your mind and I've been through stuff too. And I'm, you know, I'm a hundred percent come to me with no judgment, only love. You can vent and it's worked. I've had people call me later on and they're like, I don't know how you knew, but I just, yeah, I just want to talk. Mm-hmm. And that's huge. Um, I think so many of us are just nervous to have those conversations, including myself. I've actually been on the other end of that, actually, just the other week. uh, I went and uh, had a coffee with a friend, and um, we were just talking about life and our struggles with this type of stuff. And he just asked me, he goes, do you want me to be the person that you talk to about this or, um, or vent? He goes, I'm here for you. And he goes, but if you're not ready to open up to me, he's like, there's no judgment. Or if you're not ready to open up, just, he goes, know that there are people here for you Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. that. And can I just say, too, that I used to be the person that hid this stuff. I didn't want you to know these things about me. And I got brave and I started sharing it because that's when people want to share with you, too. Mm -hmm. So be real about the stuff you've Mm -hmm. gone through, the struggles you've gone through. I'm not saying you have to air out your dirty laundry. But if the situation warrants it and you can help someone that's struggling the way you've struggled, please share your heart because that's going to help them meet you in that place. Also, if you're ready to make sure if they're ready to talk and they want to hear from you, uh, just be careful how you say it and how you go about it. And I'm not saying, Shauna, that that you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. but I think it's Mm -hmm. so important to understand that there is a way and a tone to go about it too. That might take some time mm-hmm. to get there. Mm-hmm. And I think, Shauna, what you were saying of the, you know, no judgment type of thing is, is really important because mm-hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm always afraid of whenever I talk to people about this stuff. And most of the time, if someone's coming to you with these things, they understand that, you know, they, they don't like feeling like this and they feel like it's dumb that mm-hmm. they feel like that. They don't need you to tell them, you know, yeah, you're right. Like you're being, you know, they don't need you to 
to tell them what to do or that they're wrong. Just mm-hmm. they need someone to to hear them, you know. And that's something I struggle with a lot of times is letting people know that I hear them. I can jump to wanting to give advice or, you know, strategies or whatnot. But even just saying, yeah, that really sucks, you know, being there right. to be able to to listen and to hear them is so important. And you do have to be careful who you speak to because mm-hmm. obviously there are people that will gossip mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you don't always want that stuff everywhere. So be be aware of who you're talking to, but it's not just just pick someone that you trust and talk. Yeah, definitely. So as we're kind of wrapping up um, talking about this, what would your one piece of, of advice to whether it's someone who is themselves struggling with uh, with anxiety, depression, something like that, or with someone who has a friend who might be struggling with something, um, what piece of advice would you give to them? Just be, just be you, uh, whether it's being mm-hmm. open or vulnerable, but also... Be willing to laugh. Be willing to cry. Um, be willing to share those moments. Mm-hmm. Your feelings are real and they're valid. And it doesn't matter if your actions are the reason that you're in the situation that you're in and that's why you're feeling this way or whatever's going on. Um, this is it's, You can't change the past. You know what I mean? And this is where you're at. And I think that moving forward in a healthy way is just the first step that you can make. And if that means speaking to a doctor or your friends or family. It's just it, your feelings are valid and real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the biggest things that has really helped me, that always helps me whenever I hear this, is to remember that you're not alone as well. It's mm-hmm. really easy to, when you get in these, yeah, when you get into that mindset, it's really easy to think you're the only one going through this, that it is dumb that you're feeling like this, that you, you know, are, that people won't understand, that people don't, you know, won't get it, X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, But that's a lie and that's not true. And sometimes that can come from a defense, like some sort of defense mechanism that we learned when we were younger to do whatever. Um, But that's not true. And you need to recognize Mm -hmm. that. And to remember, I am not alone. There are so many other people who are, are in the same boat as I am, who are there to help me, who are, you know, the things that I'm feeling, like you said, are are real. And it's okay to tell people because other people are struggling with this too. Mm-hmm. I know we're, we're going to wrap up here. I just want to say too that God is a big reason mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. that I got better. And so, you know, if you are struggling and you want prayer, please reach out to us. We would mm-hmm. love to pray for you. But that's another big thing. I gave it all to God and I prayed a lot. And that really, really helped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you... Yeah, that's that's a really, really big one. If you have things that you need prayer for um, or if you struggle with, with anxiety, depression, um, or just your mental health in general, I know that all three of us have kind of talked about ways that we've been able to work through and work with some of these issues um, and some of these things in our lives. And we want to be able to celebrate that and celebrate that with you as well. So go onto our Facebook or on our Instagram. Um, you can find us at Welcome to Adulting Podcast. Um let us know. Uh, we'd love to celebrate that with you because um, I think that that's awesome to see the way that the people work through this, that the Lord is working through people in this mm-hmm. way. Um, so, yeah, let us know. Yeah. And just uh, really quickly, again, you're not alone mm-hmm. and you are loved. Mm-hmm. There is hope and that, yeah, you are loved. There is hope. You don't have to feel the way you do and you can have hope and it is out there. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Um Definitely, you know, please tell your friends about the show if this is something that you've struggled with or you know someone who's struggling with this. Um, yeah, please definitely, definitely share this. Thank you to the Family Radio Network um, for, for producing this show, allowing us to make this show. Um, if you're looking for, for more information about, um, you know, how you can find encouragement, if you're looking for a place for hope, for strength and encouragement, please go to thefamily.net. We have all sorts of, all sorts of resources there for you that, that will help with that. Um, again, don't, don't forget to follow us on Apple podcasts. Um, you can, you know, give us a rating and a review on there. It would really help us out. Um, in the re- review, feel free to let us know, you know, ways that you've been able to work through some of, some of your, you know, mental health, uh, issues. So as we're going, I just want to remind you as, as Caleb and Shauna were saying, you're not alone. You are loved. If you are struggling with anything, please feel free to reach out and get help. If you know someone who's struggling, feel free to reach out to them. Um, But we say it at the end of every show, but I think it really applies here. 
It's okay. You can take a deep breath. You can cut yourself some slack because you do got this. Bye.